Welcome back to another episode of Not Your Typical Podcast. This episode is a little different, actually very different. We are going to be addressing and answering the questions that you have submitted to us. So sit tight, it's going to be a fun ride. There are so many knowledgeable professionals and talented experts in the world in every field. I'm neither a professional nor an expert in any field. And that's exactly why this podcast has the title it does. I'm Charlene Amanoff, and this is Not Your Typical Podcast. Well, I am so excited for a very chilled out episode of Not Your Typical Podcast. But we're going to first start by saying this is Li'ilui Nishmat Miriam Sarabat Yaakov Moshe. It should bring a tremendous aliyah to the neshama. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a listener, for subscribing to the Living L'Chaim channel, and for just appreciating good Jewish kosher content. Shout out to Yaakov Langer, the best producer, the best director, the best everything. We have so many questions that you guys have submitted. I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm like, I'm, I have my all my, my screens here with all the questions that you've been sending in. We're going to try to tackle as many as we can in this short time. And if we don't finish, maybe Bezrat Hashem, we could do part two, but we're going to jump right into it. You guys know that I'm a big davener. I'm always posting different things about sigulot and tehillims and, and delicious um, tefillot and nishmats and all that. So this question came through a lot. So this is the one I want to start with. What is your daily tefillah routine like and how do you have time to daven? Okay. So women, we have a very amazing gift from Hashem. We are really not bound by time related mitzvot, you know, that we could kind of like choose our own hours of how we daven and, and connect to Hashem. Of course, we do try to really squeeze in shachrit min chamar of however we can. But I'm going to walk you through my daily routine of how I daven and how it's very not overwhelming. Um, Baruch Hashem, my days are exceptionally busy. I don't really have that much free time, but I always do make time for tefillot and I do a lot of things. So I'm going to walk you through that. First of all, um, I get up at 6.13 in the morning. That is when my alarm wakes me up because 6.13 is Taryag Mitzvot. So why not wake up to a holy number? And right away, I, I wash up. I go downstairs. I don't wake up my kids yet. I first say my brachot, brachot shachar, and then I have my cup of coffee because you need coffee to function. Once I'm fully caffeinated, then I get the kids off to school, and then I start to daven. My davening isn't so um, time-consuming from the sitter, and I'll explain. I really try every day, Bulinader, to just do my brachot, Elu uh, Devarim, Shema, leading into Shmona Esrei, and if it's Rosh, Hashan, Rosh Chodesh, there's always, you know, we always make sure to, to squeeze in a Hallel and Yalav Yavo. I also, Baruch Hashem, Always, always say Nishmat Kol Chai every single day. I actually say it twice a day, fun fact, just because one is for personal Yeshuot that we're davening for, and one is always um, I will sign on to a group who's looking for a, a member. So I do two Nishmat Kol Chais a day. Ever since Gali survived her drowning, Godul Hashem, I promised Hashem Blinader that I would say Perak Kufyutet in Tehillim every single day, 119. It's the longest Perak in all Tehillim. And... I say shir hashirim every single day, blina der. Now, don't get overwhelmed. That is not what you need to do. That is my routine, and I'll explain why I'm so in love with davening. This is my therapy. This is truly my way to connect to Hashem. I'm obsessed with davening, and it really solves so many of my anxieties, my worries, my struggles, my problems. My, I feel like I have... Just a special koach of davening. So that's my daily routine. Does not mean it has to be yours, but because so many of you wanted to know what I'm doing on a daily basis, this is it. In addition to Shabbat, Shabbat there's always Igerat Ramban, um, Perak Shira, and uh, we usually split Tehillim Chida for somebody who's sick. So that is that. Next, I love this one. How I, I follow you on Instagram, and I'm always amazed at how you never yell at your kids. How? Guys, you need to watch episode two to get the answer to that. Baruch Hashem, Hodul Hashem, I don't have, um, I don't struggle with anger. I don't, 
I have other I have other ways that I make up for that, but I don't have anger issues. I also think that anybody who listens to the podcast all about anger will walk away probably having bought an Igarata Ramban, but also one major thing is that I didn't have children easily. You know already that I've had 11 miscarriages and I was told I would never have a child of my own. So I kind of made a mental promise, but also just an emotional commitment to sh- prove to Hashem that when Ezra Hashem, that day comes that I'm blessed with children, going back uh, 20 years now, I will value and appreciate everything and I will not yell at them, I will not get angry. But that's me. I have to tell you that it's a sore subject in my home because Jonathan wishes I was more of a disciplinarian. He says I'm too much love and too much chesed and there's too much jumping on the bed and making uh, smoothies at 3 o'clock in the morning. So it's not even that appreciated. It's not that good that I don't discipline my kids. They're, just, they're also kind of really fun and cool and cute and I love them. So that's that. Next, are you coming out with any more jade products? Yes. Yes. We are waiting. We are waiting for Israel to open up. And Baruch Hashem, now that it's opened up, I mean, at least Bezrat Hashem for the time being, we've kind of halted our producing new products for Jade. But I am their U.S. Um, brand ambassador for a reason. Uh, I have an amazing collection with them. Definitely go and take a look. And if you do end up buying Jade, when you enter my name as, as your promo code, you guys are giving a dollar per product to the Bat Melech shelter. I, that's where I wanted my proceeds to go. And I feel like that's something that makes the the gosh mute part of my life infused with Ruch Niyot, which is kind of what I'm all about. But yes, more jade on the horizon. We're just, I got to make my way to Israel to unveil and to create the new line. Um, favorite travel destination. I'm very honest, kind of not down to ever go anywhere in the world other than Israel and Florida. I know it sounds very lame, but I'm good. I'm really good. I don't care to go sightseeing or go see the Eiffel Tower or, you know, go to London or go to, I don't know, Haiti, Baku. Uh, Baku, I want to go for the Chizik mission again, but I'm not, inter- I'm not interested. You could like YouTube, your favorite destinations, in my opinion. I just want really good food and a really hot sun, and I'm good to go. And like shuls and, and kosher areas for my kids to hang out. So Israel and Florida, that's it. Um, there was actually a second very highly asked question. What's your dream destination? The Kotel. Yerushalayim, the Kotel. I'm going to be standing in front of the Kotel with my Tehillim, and I want to sit down and start with Ashrei and end with Hallelujah. I want to go through the entire Tehillim in front of the Kotel. That is my dream destination. That is my dream period. Um, this is kind of ridiculous, but we like ridiculous. If you could be an animal for one day, what would you be? I would be an eagle because eagles are big and I'm petite. Eagles are strong, strong, and eagles fly. And that's always been one of my dreams. I've always wondered what it would be like to fly. And that kind of answers another question. If you could have a superpower for the day, what would it be? I would want to fly because I just think that is the coolest thing ever. Um, this is this is interesting. How do you not get caught up in any drama on Instagram? Whew, that's a good one. Um, you can decide what you show what you're okay with others seeing, and what you have zero tolerance for. I have zero tolerance for drama, period. Zero tolerance for machloket. Zero patience, desire, tolerance, you fill in the blank, for anything that is not Torah dig. I mean, I don't do drama. I don't do toxic. I don't do problems. And I also... Bezrat Hashem, hopefully, I hope, I kind of try to live my life in such a clean and easy, pure way that you don't get caught up in drama. Um, I also don't follow anybody at all on my personal page. I just follow my business page because I don't want to go on and see drama. Why? Why does Instagram have to become cuckoo? Let's just keep it real and chill and easy and don't hurt other people. Don't embarrass other people. Don't call out other people. Just love. Just be loving and love the world and mind your business. 
Whew, that one's going to get to me. Um, what is the... No, I'm not answering, I'm not asking that one. Um, let's go through these four trillion messages. What makes you particularly optimistic about the future? Um, Mashiach is coming very, very soon. I Fun fact, I'm going to try to show you a photo of it, actually. I have my Mashiach suitcase. Actually, real fun fact, let me back it up for you guys. When we were doing the Hanukkah giveaway two years ago, thank you Hashem was, besides being one of our best friends in the world, they were... They were a corporate sponsor, which doesn't mean anything because nothing was sponsored. They didn't need to sponsor financially. They just We just blasted their logo on the step and repeat, the backdrop. But my beloved friends, Arie and Yaakov Josefi, Arie Blumstein and Yaakov Josefi came over so that they were watching the giveaway live from my home. And then Arie Blumstein walks into my house and he sees my um, Mashiach suitcase by my front door. And he's like, what is that? I'm like, it's my Mashiach suitcase. And he's like, what does that mean? I'm like, what do you mean? After 120 years, when we pass away, after and we have our sit down with Hashem, Hashem asks us a bunch of questions. One of those questions is, Tzipita Yeshua, did you anticipate salvation? Did you anticipate redemption? And I am so certain that Mashiach is coming that I'm packed and ready to go to Yerushalayim to the point where our, our passports, my Mashiach gown, everything was in the suitcase. He didn't believe me. I opened it up. I showed them. I was like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm literally ready to go. This is my only, this is the suitcase I'm taking. And Arya saw that and he's like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is it, by the way. If you can zoom in right over there. That's my, that's a picture from 4-12-2020. Okay, that was like the peak of COVID. That has been there ever since. But now we've replaced that suitcase with the Thank You Hashem suitcase that I helped inspire that says the Mashiach suitcase. So this, with those tambourines next to it, this is how I anticipate my redemption. I am so ready for Mashiach. We are so ready for Mashiach. Let's make it happen however we can. And we know that the only way we can make it happen is through more mitzvot and just coming closer to Hashem. So that is that. A shout out to my Thank You Hashem brothers and fam. Okay, next. Um, favorite Yom Tov. <laughs> we touched upon this in a previous podcast of mine for Meaningful People. I'll tell you what's my least favorite Yom Tov. How about that? It's not even nice to say that. Purim overwhelms me. Let's just leave it there. Purim is one of the holiest days of the year. And I'm all about tefillah. And I want so much to just sit with my tichel and my robe on the sofa and daven my kishkas out from the minute I open my eyes until the minute uh, Purim is over. But unfortunately, it doesn't become like that because everyone's costumes are crooked and this one's costume is a little different shade and the shalach manah have to be delivered and it becomes a little balagan. So I love the koach of davening on Yom Kippur, of Purim, because Purim is like pur- ke. Purim, Yom Kippurim, but everything else about Purim gets me a little bit anxious. Speaking of anxiety, someone said this and I was like, I need to talk about this. Hi, Charlene. I just wanted to ask you a really random question. Have you ever struggled with anxiety? And if so, what did you do? Fun fact. Yes, I did. I struggled with immense anxiety Um, after Gali's survival of her drowning. I was very, very sick for eight months. And by very sick, I mean, it took me eight months of, I'm I'm putting myself back in that time. It was such a dark period. And I couldn't bathe my child without throwing up. Because the moment I would see her wet, and I would remember her being pulled out of the water, I would go into shock, and I would start vomiting and pass out. It was a lot. Um, also with all of my infertility struggles and all of the miscarriages and just, you know, how many DNCs can a woman endure without it really breaking you? But I have this idea that I really think will help so many people who are either dealing with mental health issues, with anxiety, with depression, with whatever it is. You need to find your happy place inside your life. I know that I turn to music when I'm down. Music is a very big way that I release a lot of anxiety and just stress and pent up tension and, and pressure. Love, love music. I can't cook without music. When I'm, The minute I get into the house, we're blasting Israeli music. 
And dancing away your troubles really helps. Listening to music really helped me. I also delved very deeply into Svarim that talks all about Emuna. The two best books I can recommend to anybody who needs a little boost in their Emuna to try to combat anxiety is The Garden of Gratitude and the entire Living Emuna series by Rav David Asher. He just came out with volume six via Art Scroll. Highly, highly recommend this. These will really, really make a big difference to your emotional well-being. But from a physical perspective, talk to somebody. I had Dr. Neil Levy, who is a trauma specialist for Hatsala, almost on speed dial. And I remember I would call him and I couldn't, I, I would just cry and scream after Gali's drowning. And he would say, cry, cry until you feel better. This is going back 11 years now, Baruch Hashem. But there's no, there's nothing wrong with speaking to somebody. Don't be a martyr. Speak to somebody, read a lot of books, turn to Hashem, take mitzvot upon yourself, inch closer to Hashem, blast music. Some people say retail therapy. I think Jonathan would tell you that that definitely is something that I turn to also. And also, take care of your health. If you have to take a lot of vitamins, if you have to work out, do it. If you are strong up here, the body follows suit. But there is nothing wrong with asking for help. So really, really important. Um, and I'm so happy that somebody asked that. And let's see some more questions here. What are some common sense or unspoken rules that you've seen people not follow? I just think that common sense is not so common anymore. Moving along. Moving along. We're going to move along. I don't like questions that have a smidge of potential drama attached to them. Let's see. What's your superpower? I don't sleep. I don't sleep. I sleep between two and three hours a night. I'm also... I make up for those hours on Shabbat. I am out cold on Shabbat, which is part of the reason why I don't host that often on Shabbat. The Bialar Rebbe actually told me. He stays by me when he visits from Eretz Israel. He sees my life and he sees that it's a little bit hectic. And he said to me, Michal, it's not a mitzvah for you to host on Shabbat. And I was like, no, 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 don't say that. Don't say that. I love guests. He's like, okay, have guests. But not on Shabbat. Shabbat, you're off your phones are off, your computers are off, your inboxes are off, your factories are off, your businesses are off, you turn off too. So I'm like, okay. So Shabbat, I'm off. O-F-F in big, bold caps lock. But it is the, I survive week to week because of Shabbat. I think that if I, even if I wasn't Jewish, weren't Jewish, wasn't Jewish, Yaakov, what's the proper grammatical? If I weren't Jewish, if I weren't Jewish, if I wasn't Jewish, if I weren't Jewish, whatever. Thank you, Hashem, that I'm Jewish. Had it not been the case, let's rephrase it, had that not been the case, I think I would still keep Shabbat for that ability to shut off for 25 hours. It is remarkable. If you are not yet keeping Shabbat, I challenge you, Keep Shabbat this week and then send me an email and tell me it wasn't the most liberating and amazing 25 hours of your life. Um, what's, what goals are you striving to meet in 2022? We want Mashiach to come. I think that's it. That's my goal. My goal is to bring Mashiach in 2022. What's the one country you wish to travel to in the next three years? Yerushalayim. That's it. Israel. That's the only country. Would you choose the mountains or the beach? <laughs> I, I'm not a nature fan. I don't do hiking. I don't do um, camping. Jonathan claims I will go glamping. I won't go camping. I love the beach. Put me on a beach with my undercover waterwear and my Gali's Couture Fall with sunglasses, a Tehillim, and a giant bottle of water. I'm good for like hours and hours, but feed me in the process. I definitely choose the beach over hiking or outdoors. What's the best compliment you ever gave somebody? What's the best compliment I ever gave anybody? I don't know. So we're going to skip. Sorry, whoever asked that. What's the best app on your phone? Oh, actually, I have a bunch of favorite apps on my phone. Um, Uber Eats. <laughs> Uber Eats is one of my favorite apps. Instacart saves my life. We have mastered the art of time management with Instacart and Uber Eats. I really do love the Meaningful Minute app. Um, every time I get a chance to grab a little bit of Torah, I can launch it and listen. Um, 
I'm actually not the biggest fan of Instagram. I think if I wasn't on Instagram, I would never want to get it just because it can get a little nutty and crazy. Um, I love, love WhatsApp. It's a fun place to hang. And I'm looking at my phone right now. Favorite apps? Citibank, Chase, Venmo. Yeah, I'm very boring. Oh, the Tile app. Guys, if you don't have Tile, it's the best app in the whole world. You can attach little tiles to things that you lose very often. And then with a click of a button on your phone, you could find it. It's like find my iPhone, but for non-Apple products. So Tile. Okay. Sorry, that was a little like unnecessary and boring. How are we doing for time? We're good? Okay, perfection. Let's see some more questions. There's only 424 questions over here, so, so bear with me. Um, f favorite TV show? I haven't watched one minute of TV or a movie in 11 years. Actually, there's one thing Jonathan did force me to sit down and watch The Greatest Showman with him, but that's it. I haven't seen anything. I, haven't, I have no idea. I don't know. I just, ain't nobody got time for that. But you could ask Jonathan. He's, he has a lot of favorites. Um, what? Mm -mm, I don't like that question. What's frustrating you frequently? What's frustrating you frequently? The fact that Mashiach isn't here. Did we say that already? I just don't like drama. I want everyone to just get along and be nice to each other. That's all. What is the one book you offer as a gift the most? Grad, uh, Garden of Gratitude, the Living in Muna series, life-changing books. Um, what's the one movie you watched over 100 times? Okay, that's going to really age me, but probably The Sound of Music <laughs> or The Ten Commandments. Are, like We watch The Ten Commandments so often. Okay. If I were to give you $1,000, how would you spend it? I would give a thousand dollars to a thousand. I would give one dollar to a thousand different tzedakas. That is what I would do. If I had a thousand, if you give me a thousand dollars, how would I spend it? I would take one dollar and give it to here, and one dollar and give it to there. That's what I would do. Totally. Which is, by the way, kind of like the whole concept of the daily giving. So, shout out to the daily giving. That is exactly what they do with our donations. Who is your role model? I love this question. I have, I have two. I have two female role models. One is my mom, my mama, Dina Batamar. I love you with all my heart and soul. And she is a. We're waiting for the cure for cancer to come out before we can officially dub her a lymphoma warrior. But she is my favorite human being in the whole world and she is the woman who taught me all about emuna and bitachon so definitely my mom and while we're on that subject if you can have my mom in mind dina bat tamar that she should always be healthy and strong and well and every time she goes to sloan um just having my kishkas out that her scans turn up better than the last scan or clear whatever keep her in your tefillot Dina Batamara, my mom definitely one number two my OBGYN Dr. Jessica Jacob the greatest powerhouse on the face of the earth she is the biggest boss lady I know in my life and she's definitely a role model what would you tell the 21 version 21 year old version of yourself ooh that's interesting what would I tell the 21 year old version of myself I think I would tell myself to trust Hashem a little bit more, that Hashem knows what He's doing. I think when we're younger and we don't have as much experience and wisdom or knowledge or whatever, we tend to think we're in control and our actions will lead us to certain privileges or successes. But having lived 40 years, but really 80 years, I feel like I'm really 80 years old, Baruch Hashem, from all that I've experienced, I think... I realize now that I was never in control. And I actually think COVID taught that to all of us as well. When the pandemic hit, I feel like everybody was so just going out of control by not being in control. And I feel like we were never in control to begin with. So for my 20-year-old self, who was a control freak, trying to micromanage every element of my life, um, I was married, I was struggling with infertility, and I thought... If you go to this doctor and if you take that medicine and if you do this and if you do that, it's all Hashem. 
אין עוד מלבדו, השם decides everything, he determines everything and he makes everything come to fruition. So I would tell my 20 year old self, don't worry, השם has a plan, trust השם. You don't have to understand השם's ways, but you do have to trust his ways. Um, anything else? What do you love? Oh, I love this. What do you love about your job? Everything. I have the greatest job in the world, Hodul Hashem. The Gali's showroom is by far my happiest place on earth, no question. And I think one of the most amazing parts of our business is that we get to invite Akala in when she's on the fence about covering her hair and we teach her all about the amazing ways that she can cover and all the amazing brachot and the shefa that will come to her from covering. And then we also have... People who come in through, you know, to get their wigs through insurance for whatever uh, medical reasons. And then we have the clients that come back after a mission. And we have an amazing minhag in our office where it's, I think, one of my fun, the funnest day of the Gali's dream team's experience is when a client comes back in remission and we have a remission l'chaim. We have bottles of Moscato, which is my, my, I don't really drink, but if I had to drink, that's the only one I like. We have bottles of Moscato, I told you, we were kind of like losers when it comes to this stuff, but cool losers. It's the only wine that we like the taste of. So we have bottles of it um, chilled at all times in our office. And every time one of our cancer patients come back in remission, we stop what we're doing. We crack open a bottle of Moscato and we make a l'chaim and we have so much fun. And, uh, you know, it's not only for Yidin, it's for anybody. We try to make a Kiddush Hashem however we can. It is so remarkable. If you've been in our showroom during one of our remission parties, you've left with your tears streaming down your face, but your heart so full. And we probably had to Uber you home because we don't want you drinking and driving. But that is definitely one of our favorite minhagim in the Gali's showroom. Um, what else? Okay. Guys, there's a lot more that I don't know how I'm going to get to, but let me see that I touch upon everything. Um... What's my biggest fear? Oh, you know what? That's what I will say. What's my biggest life regret? I don't, I don't like to live in the past. I don't like to harp on regrets and stuff like that. But one regret I do have that if you are listening to this and you're in that position, please don't do what I did. My only real regret that I could think of is that I never went to seminary. Still, I am... I cannot believe I did not have that experience. Every one of my best friends went. My sisters went. I, all my, my family members went. I didn't go. I mean, Baruch Hashem, I had a good reason not to go. I got engaged. Jonathan came along and he was a very good reason not to go to Sam. But now that Baruch Hashem, my children are older and we're you know, applying to different yeshivas for Jacob and Bezrat Hashem soon after it's going to be Zachary and soon after it's going to be Gali and Eliza and Yosef. I'm like, I cannot believe I passed up the opportunity to learn in Eretz Yisrael for an entire year and to gain that independence. I mean, I'm fiercely independent, Baruch Hashem, but at the same time, I cannot believe I didn't get that independence that going to seminary instills in a person. So if you are a high school student listening or watching and you are on the fence about going to Israel, please do not, do not learn from me. Learn from my mistake. Go, 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 go. You will never regret, what's the saying? You may regret what you, never mind. I can't put it together. My brain, I can't figure it out. But it was something along the lines of like, your only regret will be the things you didn't do. That's not exactly true because we can regret a lot of bad things that we do. Lamaisa, go to seminary, go to yeshiva, don't. Don't let that po- opportunity pass you by. And I think that's a wrap. There's a lot more over here. We might tackle this at a future point. But in the meantime, thank you so, so, so much for watching. Thank you for listening. And if you have not yet subscribed and liked the channel, please do so because it means so much to us. And we'd love to hear your comments. So please drop a comment. Let us know your thoughts, what you think, what future episode you would love us to speak about and to bring to you. And until then, sending you all a bracha that you should all have so much bracha and hatzlacha and mazel and good health. And remember, Enod Melvado. Hashem runs the world with perfect precision and perfect timing. So don't stress. Don't micromanage. Hashem's got it under control. 
Guys, thank you so much for listening. Signing off. Good night. Living L'chaim.